Well, hi there, folks. Simon here, Ariège Pipe Smoker, and welcome to episode three of this year's How to Process Whole Leaf Tobacco series. To, well, I guess um, housekeeping to start with. I'm smoking this. I guess it's a, a bulldog chimney, semi-bent bulldog chimney. Uh, it's actually a pipe made in Spain. I think it's Salvatella, Salvatello, I'm unsure. And I'm treating myself to a bit of um, all it was, my last little bit of all it golden sliced. After a few days of smoking uncased, rough, um, <laughs> whole leaf tobacco, I thought I'd treat myself. Um, well, yeah, going to broach the subject of casing. Um, there'll probably be a few videos uh, regarding casing because uh, there's probably going to be a few different recipes. I'm hoping the weather is going to help me out here because it's been raining for days. So I've just kind of ran outside, set everything up on the table for the video and fully prepared to go running back indoors. I mean, I could film indoors, but the light levels are pretty low and I, I, I think it makes for better, um, better quality footage filming outside. So, um, I guess briefly, you should kind of talk about why we case tobacco. Um, now, I think it's safe to say probably 99.9% .9 of tobacco that we buy is cased. Um, it's not adding flavouring to make an aromatic. There's various reasons for it. Um, these leaves, I don't know if we can see these. Um, this is a bright Virginia leaf. Um, I was hoping to set all the leaves up on the table so we can um, uh, have a comp you know we can see side by side the differences, but like I say, the weather isn't on my side, so I think I'm going to keep this leaf as a reference leaf for future videos, so we can uh, see the difference. Um, this darker leaf is the sun cured Kentucky, which I'm going to case today, so you can see a lot darker. Obviously, this has been destemmed, so it's only half the leaf, I guess. Um, a lot darker, different smell, um, different texture, a similar size, actually. But as I was saying, fundamentally, when, when these leaves arrive, they're fundamentally dead. I mean, obviously, they're dead because they've been harvested. But I think you could, you know, you could put that in the cupboard for 10 years and there wouldn't be hardly any change when the leaf is in this state. And so part of the, the reason for casing is to kind of bring the leaf back to life on a, a kind of chemical and a biological level. Um, so then it, 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 it then has all of the ingredients that it needs to um, ferment and continue curing. So that's kind of one reason why we case. Now most ca fundamentally <coughs> a, 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 a casing um, consists of a sugared water. Now another reason for casing is sugar is hygroscopic as in it absorbs moisture from the atmosphere I mean anybody who knows if you live somewhere where there's a bit of humidity after some time the sugar bowl will go solid as the sugar sucks in the, the moisture from the air now with tobacco this serves a very similar purpose to like uh, was it pro proper gly glycol and glycerine um, it just helps keep the tobacco uh, at a certain level of moistness and, and um, the appearance of, of freshness rather than becoming like a dried, dried straw. It, it stays nice and supple. And also, it kind of helps with the, the speed of the burn. 
Um, one thing I've noticed smoking raw leaf is, is that Virginias will smoke a heck of a lot faster than um, a burley. And I think having this, this, this sugar element added to the leaf, it kind of um, homogenizes the burn rates a little bit. So we get something that's more consistent. And also it helps balance the acidity or the pH levels of the leaf into, uh, I mean, especially with burleys, we need to change the pH level so we don't get um, tongue burn. So there's a bit of science behind it that I don't fully understand, but I've kind of outlined the main reasons and it's kind of like seasoning the tobacco, right? It's like, you know, before you cook a steak, you'll always put a bit of salt and pepper on it at the bare minimum to just accent the steak. Um, so it's a kind of condimental process. It's a kind of biological stroke chemical process. And it just helps bring the tobacco back to life. Um, I guess uh, we can have a quick tour of the table of, of I'm starting to get a bit of an arsenal here uh, of various ingredients to make various different casings with. So let's cut to the table shop and uh, have a quick, quick um, talk around the table. So things you're probably going to need for casing quite importantly is just some clean water to wash your hands in because it is very sticky um, and you will need to wash your hands um, I mean really I should say right at the beginning of this series that if, if you are nicotine when I say intolerant if you, if you don't have a very high nicotine tolerance you may want to wear gloves when handling whole leaves because several hours of whole, um, handling whole leaves you end up with quite black fingers um, and you do absorb nicotine through your skin so you need some water to wash your hands in you need some kind of spray that can deliver a fine mist um, a couple of reasonable sized bowls just for um, holding the tobacco and something to spray into and to contain it there's the leaves I showed you before um, this is a flavoured water um, that's, that's made by distilling water with juniper. Um, here we have a similar thing, um, fleur d'orange, um, orange flowers, orange blossom water. We've got some honey, we've got some white vinegar, we have um, some cider vinegar, we have some lemons. And the sugar collection at the moment is white sugar. We have some uh, black molasses or treacle. And in here I have some unrefined organic brown, uh, I think it's Muscovado sugar. The uh, really sticky stuff that's got lots of dark flecks in there and it's like really, um, really yummy. So that's kind of fundamentally what I've got at the moment. Like I say, it could be a lot simpler and you can just use white sugar and cheap vinegar, but I'm trying to step it up a bit from last year's experiments. Um, so, um, let's get on with uh, mixing some juice up. So we're going to case the sun-cured Kentucky today. Um, I cased the flu cured Kentucky last night with exactly the same recipe. Um, I did a little bit first, tested it, and yeah, it's, it's made a really, really noticeable and pleasant improvement. So fundamentally, um, a casing syrup or, or liquid or juice, it's all fundamentally about 50% by weight water and 50% by weight sugar. So because my thoughts on tasting both of these Kentuckys is there were some um, 
kind of floral notes there, but also um, kind of notes of of, of, of like um, maybe juniper and cedar. These these maybe a bit of laurel. Um, kind of quite quite aromatic, but uh, in an unperfumey sense. Um, kind of like more laurel and juniper than say um, uh, roses, or something kind of quite almost perfume, not perfumey, but um, yeah, you know, you get what the idea. And so, by chance, I was in the organic shop uh, yesterday, and I've just shown you this on the table. And it's basically pure water um, that's been passed through a still that's been filled um, full of juniper. Um, so it's not like an essential oil, there's no oil, it is actually just um, a, a, a kind of flavoured water. And I thought the juniper's really, really, really going to go well with the inherent flavour of the Kentucky. Um, yeah, and, and, and like I say, the, the stuff I cased last night, it, it was nice. Uh, it doesn't come through in the flavour. But when, when I lived in Portugal, I used to drink sometimes in a cocktail bar that was ran by a retired gangster from Paris. And we got talking about cooking and etc. And this guy come out with, with, a, with a saying that stuck with me because we were talking about garlic in food. And he was, uh, Simon... Garlic is like the scent of, on a beautiful woman. You should only notice it in its absence. That's probably a really bad French accent, but you get the idea that when it comes to putting garlic in food or, or, or a woman wearing perfume, it shouldn't jump out at you and be obvious. It should be very subtle and you only notice it in its absence when it is not there. It's the same with seasoning food, you know, you don't want your uh, food to taste salty, but you notice it when, there, when, when food hasn't been seasoned. So it's a very similar approach to casing. It is just seasoning the tobacco. So this, isn't, this doesn't taste like juniper when you smoke it. It doesn't transfer, but it's just added that little bit extra. Um, so. I don't need to weigh this because it's 200 millilitres. So I'm going to put the 200 millilitres in the pan. So now I need, oh it smells lovely even from here. Mm. So now I need 200 grams of sugar. Again, I, I don't really have any good scales, but I know in here we have, um, it was about 450 grams and, and, and this is um, organic dark brown, is it muscovado sugar? The really dark sticky stuff. So I want about half of this bag, which is about that much. Now this is where there's a bit of science that I don't fully understand, but I, I will pass on the information that I found. Is we need to, it's called inverting the sugar. Um, and I think it fundamentally it changes from sucrose or sucrose into fructose stroke glucose. Is the, the, it changes the, the, the sugars somehow. Um, and from what I can gather, the reason we invert the sugar is because inverted sugar, it bonds and reacts with, and it causes a secondary process, with the free amino acids within the leaf. Whereas a sucrose sugar, it doesn't react with the, with the, with the um, free amino acids in the leaf. So when I said earlier about bringing back stuff back to life on, on various levels, for some reason we need to get this sugar to react with the amino acids, which I, I guess is going to help with um, the maturing process. One thing I did forget to say, I mean the, the other reason for casing is, is to prevent mould in some respects. Obviously sugar is um, if it's a high enough dose, does act as a preservative, as does vinegar. 
Um, and to invert the sugar, we add a splash of vinegar. Um, you, you need about a tablespoon, a litre, um, but I, you know, that's probably okay. A splash, a splash of vinegar. So I'm going to go and put this on the boil now. And basically, we just need to boil it for you know simmer it. You know, not not boiling furiously, but a, a gentle rolling kind of boil for around about ten minutes for the for the sugar to dissolve and for the vinegar to convert the sugar into an inverted form. So I'm going to get on and do that and we will reconvene when this is ready. Um, it might be somewhere different, um, it's probably going to be quite spliced together this video um, because of uh, emanating rainfall and storms. So without further ado I'm going to go and get that on the boil. Well, that's had its um, 10 minute boil. Hmm. It's a shame you don't have smell vision. It smells absolutely wonderful, actually. A nice, rich, deep, slightly caramelised with the, um, the aroma of the um, juniper water. That's it. If you were doing this and maybe you'd put some lemon peel in or um, various loose stuff in the water to, to give it an infusion. At this stage I would actually pass this through a coffee filter because uh, there's nothing worse than getting a clogged jet on the spray. But because this is, uh, hasn't had anything uh, physical put in such as lemon peel or um, you know stick of cinnamon or whatever you may choose to use it's just fine unfiltered There's pressure in there um there's a bit of um smaller stuff left in the bottom of the bag I'm going to keep that uncased and I'll send out um, a little bit to everyone that's um, contributed to this project when I send out the final tobacco I'll include um, a little bit each of the various tobaccos just as they came uncased so you can uh, maybe experiment yourself or, or, or at least um, kind of get an idea of, of, of what the tobacco is like so, I flattened these out as much as possible and I'm just going to make a layer in the big bowl here. I mean, obviously, we're trying to get an, uh, uh, as even spread as we can of this uh, casing liquid to try and cover as much of the leaf as possible. So, obviously, if you want it quite unfurled, um, obviously, there's always going to be bits that, that, that get missed, but um, as we'll see further down the process, it's. it's, it's it's not the end of the world if there's the odd bit that doesn't quite get a full spray because when we come to press it all of these juices in the tobacco are really going to um, spread and uh, get to every last nook and cranny. My biggest concern at this stage is if something's bunched up, um, obviously we're adding more moisture to it now, if something's bunched up it, it may take longer to dry which kind of increases the risk of um, possible mould growing. So, how do we do this? Possibly. Sorry for making you see sick. A little bit of uh, camera alterage, and hopefully we can see down into the bowl. Yeah, that's not fine enough at all. Put in the 
to lay her down. Because you'll see um, shortly, the, the next process is really going to... Uh, we're going to get a lot easier... E e um, it's going to get more homogenised. But I don't want to overcomplicate. of a mess of this but uh, it's okay. I think possibly it's um, slightly too thick uh, the syrup to get through the sprayer but it doesn't really matter as we will see shortly. And it is a little bit of um, a case that uh, less is more because we, we can always add more um, casing syrup when we come to doing the pressing part. You want to wear old clothes for this because you will get uh, <laughs> you will get sticky. Now, commercially, when they do this, from what I can um, glean off the internet, is they put it into a big. When I say commercially, I mean maybe I think Cornell and Deal actually do it um, by hand on benches, but uh, bigger bigger tobacco factories. It's kind of almost like a big. Um, it's almost like a big washing machine drum that tumbles the tobacco, um, it heats it, and then they kind of um, have spray nozzles into the drum. And while it's rotating and being heated under high pressure, they spray in the casing solution. Um, obviously, I can't do that because, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of industrial equipment. Um, but I've kind of devised a way to um, imitate that. So I think what's best to do now, I'm going to get on through this um, because there's no point you watching me for 10 minutes spraying water on a leaf. It'll be a bit boring. And I will cut back in uh, for the next stage of this. Um, and then uh, it will start to make sense when we're talking about pressure and homogenization. But I'll do that on the next um, next stage. All right, then, guys, see you in a few minutes. My time. A few seconds, your time. <laughs> okay, so I've, I've built the layers up, give it a spray every layer. Now we're just going to uh, give it a few turns, probably finish the rest of the... I mean, I'm not sure exactly what the right day should be. We're just sort of aiming to get, you know, not soaking wet leaves, but, you know, as even a, even a cover as possible as we can. It's a lot nicer spray now. Um, it smells absolutely wonderful, actually.
-hmm. That's about it. The hands are the rinse. Now, my when I was talking earlier on about pressure, um, the technique I the technique I've kind of formulated myself, I guess, is now I'm going to get these leaves bundled up a bit. And I'm going to stuff them into these glass jars, fundamentally. With a bit of pressure, it kind of helps homogenise um, the amount of casing on the leaves. Obviously, some you know will have dry bits and bigger blobs, bigger droplets of casing than other bits. But by doing this, it does help homogenise it quite a lot. And then what we're going to do is, is I'm going to put these, seal these jars up, and put them in the pressure cooker for. Probably about, probably about 20 minutes. Um, I'm not really trying to stove the tobacco to change uh, the flavour profiles. But obviously by putting it into a pressure cooker and getting it up to pressure, giving it like 20 minutes at full pressure, we're kind of um, imitating spraying the casing liquid at a high pressure in a hot environment. So we're going to put this into the hot environment, which is the pressure cooker. Obviously the pressure is going to build to, um, I think it's a couple of atmospheres. I think, I think, um, yeah, I think you gain a couple of atmospheres of pressure in the pressure cooker. And then of course, When the, when, when, the, when the pressure cooker's um, got back down to temperature, I then let it go cold. Um, and be, because these have heated up in the pressure cooker, the air inside has expanded and, and has escaped. And when they cool down, you actually end up with a vacuum inside these jars. So we're kind of doing a two-fold way of impregnating the leaves with this um, casing solution where we're pressurising it hot and then we're going to let it sit in a vacuum for, for like a few hours inside the jars before I reopen the jars. Um, I hope this is making sense and it's not just a rambling, um, <laughs> incoherent. <laughs> but it will become apparent when uh, I kind of do the practical demonstration. There's a stick, don't want to stick. Quite wet and sticky at this stage, but that's okay. And obviously, it's like squeezing out a sponge. You get the pressure in there. It's, it's like um, really going to help homogenise the. Uh, try and get an even spread possible of the casing uh, solution on the leaves. So, for those of you who aren't familiar with these jars, I mean they're quite common in France, not so in England. Um, they're basically conserving jars, they're a two-part system. Now this lid is not airtight, this is a bit, it's only dirt from last night's, um, I used them last night to process the uh, flu cured. You have these um, lids and these actually have the rubber seal on them. And so they, they drop on top like this. You could probably use jam jars or, or any other canning jar, I'd imagine. Now, the way that these work, obviously, 
You don't want to do these up too tight because they're a bugger to undo actually. You just want to loose, loose finger tight as they say. Now how these work, I'll put the last one on. As I said, this is going in the pressure cooker which gets up to, it raises the boiling temperature of the water to, because it's under high pressure to around about 120 degrees. So obviously the air in here is going to expand and these allow the excess pressure to balance with the external pressure. They, they, they let hot air out as it were, as it expands. Now, of course, when they cool down, this air starts contracting and these get sucked on um, because you're we're forming a vacuum inside here, effectively, in the cooling stage. And this is when they seal. The other reason I do, I've been doing it, uh, this technique in the jars is because this is a commercial product these leaves so I mean, you know they're not hand grown tobacco leaves they're bulk tobacco leaves and invariably you do find the old, odd one that's got like a few little mold spores around um the thicker end of the, the thicker end, oh, let's find a good one in the thicker end of the stem where sometimes they're a little bit moist and you do find the occasional mold spore um, so obviously by by getting these up to pressure for like 20 odd minutes we're kind of sterilizing um sterilizing the tobacco effectively so it's going to kill off any um um kind of uh, mold spores anything like this that we don't want is it's going to get an annihilated at this um this stage basically so it's it's it just means that you just have to be a bit careful from now on in with um, uh, the moisture level of the leaves, so you know any ambient mold spores here don't don't start germinating. So yeah, it kind of just means starting with a clean blank canvas, effectively for the the next set stage. Um, so I'm going to go and blast these in the pressure cooker and um, wash up uh, all this sticky stuff, get it all clean again, and then reconvene here for the opening I guess and um, yeah we'll take it from there okay uh, again see you in an hour my time uh, about two seconds your time <laughs> okay right, down to pressure the same um, See what we have. Um, it's probably not possible to see in here actually, uh, I'm not sure. But when I put these jars in the pressure cooker, you, you only need so much water covering the bottom of the jars. I mean, it's the steam that gives the heat rather than uh, the amount of water in there. So. Uh, Still a bit hot. And obviously the, the, the other um, advantage of, of doing it like this is now that all of the leaves in here will be very, very homogenous in their moisture content. And you see, oh, that wasn't quite a vacuum that one. I probably should have left it a bit longer to cool down, but the weather's holding out. I thought I'd be battling the weather a little bit. Yeah. It's nice pulling them out when they're still um, a bit warm or a bit hot because uh, a lot of the excess water will evaporate off. And it's amazing. I mean, these these um, the bag of sun cured tobacco, um, Kentucky and flu cured, didn't really have that much smell to them. Um, when you open the bag of burley, the, the, you're immediately greeted with this amazing uh, burley smell. But now, if you heard the vacuum then, but now these have a really nice um, kind of nutty, uh, slightly caramelly, nutty 
the rover to it. I use um, exactly the same technique as this, um, as in putting it into jars, uh, for stoving tobacco, which I'll do in another video. Um, if I was stoving, I would probably leave them in the jars for uh, probably closer to an hour, maybe even two hours, depending. But we'll cover that on, a, on another video. Ooh, hot. Mmm. <laughs> the house smells lovely actually. There's a nice cooked tobacco smell now. Now I'll probably leave these in this tub uh, at least until tomorrow just so that any excess moisture can uh, be, um, be lost. Luckily it's quite humid at the moment so I uh, don't really run the risk of it drying out and going crispy again. Um, tonight when I'm watching TV I'll probably go through it and unfurl the leaves a little bit more just to make sure that the drying's um, homogenous. And the other, the, the other good thing about um, doing it in the jars like this is it's not so it's not so pronounced with um, I found really with the Kentuckys, but especially with Virginias. If you do an experiment and say put them um, in, 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 in a casserole dish in the oven, you'll notice when they get hot, you'll get a really, really, really strong smell of ammonia. Um, it's just part of the uh, part of the aging process and the curing process is to uh, eliminate as much ammonia as possible. And so heating them up in these jars, even for 20 minutes, it really does get rid of... Uh, some of the more obnoxious elements of the smoke. Like I say, I, I did the flu cured last night and had a bit of a test smoke. And it's very, 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 um, a lot more pleasant to smoke. A lot of the acridness is gone. Um, the burn rate is a lot more um, uh, 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 acceptable. A lot of the harshness is gone. Um, the flavors are kind of quite accented. So, I think that's probably about it for this video. It's probably a bit long and rambling. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of... Uh, well, I was, I was planning on doing this video, but uh, it's a bit of a spur of the moment, like leap out in the, the gaps in the rain. And uh, <laughs> but I hope it's been of some worth. And, of course, if anyone's got any kind of suggestions or they know more than I do, which probably isn't too hard you know please let me know I probably use a little bit too much because I was having issues with my spraying bottle so I probably over cased this a little bit um, but that doesn't really matter um, because I'll just when I say it doesn't matter, um, certain tobaccos, like Latakia, Dark Fired, you don't want to case these. They're, 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 they're okay as they are. Um, but this, this, this Kentucky is going to end up with Dark Fired, so I think it's quite good to have a, a bit of extra sweetness there to offset, you know, like the uh, abruptness of the Dark Fired tobacco. And it appears very sticky now, that's because it's still hot. Um, 
but by tomorrow, when this has all been unfurled and it, it's got to its right, you know, kind of right humidity levels, you'll see it'll just look like ordinary tobacco leaf again. It's kind of got this uh, sugary solution impregnated. So I guess, yeah, you know, um, that's pretty much it. I guess just to quickly recap, casing is just fundamentally by weight, 50% sugar, 50% water, sprayed on leaves, fundamentally. I mean, last year when I did this, I heated the leaves up in the oven um, to get them hot so that it would uh, absorb the um, casing mixture more readily. But the problem is you, you end up with very brittle leaves and it just makes an absolute mess. So I've done a few experiments using the jars and it, it, it's a good way of doing it. You, know, you, can get, you can get pressure on the leaves, you can get the vacuum on the leaves when it cools down. So uh, the sugar, you know, the solution hat can actually penetrate into the leaf rather than sitting on the surface. I might even, um, as this project progresses, there might be some progressions on this technique, not, not the recipe part of it, but the application, um, anything I can find that's going to save a bit of labour and a bit of time. But it's fundamentally the same principle, you know, I'll, I'll taste the tobacco for a day or two, get a feel for it, and then make up a casing solution that is complementary to the flavours I can find in the tobacco. Right guys, well I'm going to sign off. Um, I probably need to wash my hands before I turn the, turn, turn the camera off because I'm going to get a big uh, sugary fingerprint and I don't have my uh, hand washing bowl out here. Alright then guys, well I'll, I'll see you in a few days. Um, I might do a couple of videos before the next tobacco video. Um, there's a couple of VRs that I've got if I get time. I might uh, do a video. Um, hopefully next week we've got some uh, a few days of sun forecasts. So we can get back out and do some walking again. He's uh, kind of missing that a little bit. So I hope it's been of some use. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video, folks. So uh, take care now. Um, have a nice weekend if I don't see you at all over the weekend. And uh, thanks for your time. Signing off.